In the past four weeks, a lot has happened in my family life, and even that would be an understatement. So our daughter Eva and the love of her life Isaac were married, our daughter Grace and the love of her life Eli were engaged, and then snuck in the midst of it all just a few days after Eva and Isaac's wedding, Steve and I celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary. I should mention there was also a 15th birthday and a university graduation mixed up in the past four weeks as well. And of course, our, our wedding anniversary was completely overshadowed by the wedding and the engagement of our two oldest girls. And we were completely fine with that, completely appropriate. In fact, on May 31st, the evening of our anniversary, we were so exhausted um, that we went to Port Luzi, ordered some takeout, took a blanket to the park, and then proceeded to fall asleep at 7 p.m. on the picnic blanket because we were so exhausted. A wedding and an engagement are really big life events and completely worthy of celebration. And I need to tell you, it felt amazing to have a wedding celebration, to have all the people who love Eva and Isaac together in one room celebrating with them as they began their married life together. It's a day that I will play over and over in my mind and treasure for the rest of my life. And the same will absolutely be true for Grace and Eli's wedding. And all of this got me thinking, as I have reflected on the past month, we actually made the least deal of what was in reality the biggest deal, our anniversary. And I can't help but think that this is often how we approach faith. We make a really big deal out of the events, but then we forget that the real deal is actually the ongoing life. Weddings and engagements are a big deal. And you don't get to the 25th anniversary without the ongoing life to get there. As Steve and I celebrate 25 years, we're not so much celebrating the event as we are honoring and celebrating all of the days and choices, the lifestyle that got us here. We're celebrating the life that got us here more than we're celebrating the event because it's in the day-by-day, week-by-week lifestyle that gets you to a place of celebrating 25 years. Are you tracking with me? Well, today we're closing off the series on what it looks like for us to live at our best. And today we wanna talk about what it means to live the lifestyle and how that is drastically different than attending events and programs. And while events and programs, of course, matter, it's the everyday lifestyle of experiencing God at work that ultimately matters. And so today we wanna focus on how we can shift and maintain our perspectives on the everyday more than just the big events. Now, the first way that we live out a lifestyle of following Jesus and live at our best is through understanding that the primary way that we live a life of faith, live a life of faith is outside of our church walls and not within it. At the very end of the Gospel of Matthew, following the account of the resurrection of Jesus, Jesus appears to his disciples and he commissions them. In other words, he sends them. Here is what we read. Jesus came near and spoke to them. I've received all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Look, I myself will be with you every day until the end of this present age. In this text, the Greek word that go is translated from, it means to travel, to remove, to depart, to walk, to take a journey. It's an action word, and it requires that you and I are being sent out. And Jesus, who has been given all authority in heaven and on earth, instructs the disciples, instructs us to go, to make disciples, to live a life that makes other people want to be disciples. We learn straight from Jesus that our primary work is outside of the church walls. It's found in the life that we live, in the relationships that we build with our kids, our spouse, our parents, in our neighborhood, at work, with our friends. Our primary work is living the kind of life that draws people close to Jesus rather than push them far away. And what I love about this passage is that we are not sent out alone. We're sent out in the power and with the presence of the Holy Spirit. The second way that we live out a lifestyle of following Jesus and living at our best is through living a moment by moment kind of life, not just one that's defined by the highlight moments. And this means that we understand that each moment counts and has value and that the big moments only count if we're making the everyday moments count. So let's read in the book of John chapter 15, what Jesus teaches us. He says this, remain in me and I will remain in you. A branch can't produce fruit by itself, but must remain in the the vine. 
Likewise, you can't produce fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, then you will produce much fruit. Without me, you can't do anything. As the Father loved me, I too have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy will be in you and that your joy may be complete. Now here we keep bumping into this word remain. And to remain simply means to stay. It means to stay connected to Jesus. It means that you and I stay connected to his love. Now, I am not a farmer and I'm barely even a gardener, but I do understand that in order for fruit to grow, the branch must be connected to its life source. It must be connected to the vine. And to apply this to our relationship with Jesus, it means that you and I function at our absolute best when we remain in relationship, when we don't drift, when we remain in constant connected connection to Jesus in a moment by moment kind of way, when we remain in his love. And now finally, the third way that we live out the lifestyle of following Jesus and live at our best, it's by allowing the church to be a resource for us on the journey. It's by relating to the church as a partner rather than as a one directional provider. In the book of Ephesians, we read that the church is not designed to be a provider of spiritual growth, but rather a partner and a resource for each of us as we follow Jesus. In fact, the church exists to equip us as the people of God. And in Ephesians 4, here's what we read. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. His purpose was to equip God's people for the work of serving and building up the body of Christ until we all reach the unity of faith and knowledge of God's Son. The whole body grows from him as it is joined and held together by all of the supporting ligaments. The body makes itself grow in that it builds itself up with love as each one does its part. Now, this text illustrates to me that the church is designed to equip Christ followers so that the body of Christ can be equipped to serve and be built up. And we all have a role to play. We can all reach the unity of faith and grow in the knowledge of Jesus because the church exists to equip us and partner with us so that all of us can grow in our relationship with Jesus and walk in the ways of love. Now, as I've thought about how the church is designed to partner with us in the walk of faith, I can't help but think that there are two ways that we see this so clearly. And both of these areas matter so much to me. I see this both so clearly in family ministry and in how you and I relate to spiritual practices. As I think about family ministry, we know that faith is caught more than it's taught. And we know that parents have the greatest spiritual influence in the lives of their kids and teens when it comes to faith, and that the church is here to walk alongside parents. Now, parents, for those of you who are in the room with us right now, are you relying on the church to spiritually raise your kids, or are you prioritizing your faith journey, your relationship with God, so that your kids will see God at work in you? Are you being the kind of Christ follower that you hope that your child or teen will one day be? And are you letting us as a family ministry come alongside you, walk with you in this challenge and adventure? Now, when it comes to practice-based contemplative spirituality, I haven't always been so keen on this. In fact, there was a time in my life where I would have found this uncomfortable, but that was before God met me in a very deep and transformative way. And I have learned that sometimes what makes us uncomfortable is actually an invitation for growth. It actually says more about me and where I'm at than anything else. And it's through contemplative practices that I have become transformed. In fact, practices have transformed me more than any sermon ever could. And so my invitation is to pay attention to your reactions, to your resistance, to your discomfort. 
It's a growing edge and it's there to teach you and grow you. Contemplative practices have had a way of moving truth from my head to my heart, from my head to my body, and help me to see how beloved I am. And when I live from that place of belovedness, when belovedness is my identity, it changes everything. The spiritual practices that we engage in together on Sunday mornings, they're for the purposes of giving all of us tools that we can use outside of the church walls on our everyday lives so that we can stay connected to the vine. And when we engage in practices collectively on a Sunday morning, it's a really beautiful way that if we're open, we can experience God together as we grow as God's children. Now, Remember how I began by telling you about our anniversary and how it almost snuck away on us amidst the excitement of a wedding and an engagement? Well, fortunately, a few months back, Steve and I, um, we made the choice to set aside an evening to have an anniversary celebration with eight close friends, friends who have walked the path with us and have called us to be the very best versions of ourselves, friends who have contributed to this 25th anniversary milestone. Well, that happened last week, and it was so special. The night completely took our breath away. Now, the thing I need to tell you, though, is the night before the party, Steve and I got into a ridiculous fight. Now, it was completely avoidable, and I'm sure that in time, we will look back and laugh. But in the midst of it, we were just a perfect storm for a fight. We were running hard on adrenaline. We were exhausted. Um, There was lots of excitement. There was little sleep. We were just kind of like passing like ships in the night to the point that we got into this ridiculous fight the night before our 25th anniversary celebratory dinner. And we actually almost considered canceling the dinner, except that we knew that Well, first of all, we're stubborn. And secondly, we knew that our friends had made it such a priority to attend and we couldn't do that. They had all set aside this evening in the midst of a busy month. And we knew that we'd look foolish and that counted for something. And so last Thursday evening, we raced home from work. We had about 10 minutes to repair, to hug, and to allow ourselves to soften as we had the 30-minute drive toward Niagara-on-the-Lake. And by the time we arrived at the restaurant, we were talking, we were holding hands, we were connecting, and we were even sort of smiling. And we were arriving a little bit worn out and a little bit real. And so as our friends arrived one by one, we could feel ourselves beginning to relax. We could feel ourselves beginning to soften as we allowed ourselves to be loved and celebrated by our people. And it was a long and lingering dinner. And after three hours around the table, it was beautiful. The sun was setting over the vineyard. And then even after dessert, we stayed around for another hour, an hour of laughter and clinking glasses and storytelling. And then our friend Stephen initiated the most beautiful and surprising conversation asking us what we most look forward to in the next 25 years. And he wasn't just asking us, he was asking all of us around the table. And it led into this really beautiful time of sharing, sharing about mystery and about the long game and about what's on the horizon and about how precious life is and what a gift life is and about how we can create or how we want to create more opportunities like the one that we had around the table that evening. And while it's safe to say that we are profoundly glad that we didn't cancel that dinner, the dinner wasn't really the big deal. It was all of the little moments that brought us there. The big moments matter because of the moment by moment lifestyle. And as we sat around the table, it was exactly that. It was a series of insignificant stories, seemingly insignificant stories and choices that all led to what we were celebrating. And while the fight the night before wasn't great, it was a part of the bigger story, and we found perspective within it. And the thing is, we needed good and safe people around us to remind us of what is real, to remind us of what is good. And while, of course, this is massively true for a 25th wedding anniversary, it's way, way more true for a life of faith because it's the lifestyle that matters. And the church gets to be the good and the safe people that remind us why the path matters and why the lifestyle matters and why it matters to follow Jesus because it's in the lifestyle of following Jesus that you and I are transformed. And so as we close today, here's the invitation for all of us. How do we live our faith more outside of the church walls? How do we be the church 
more than go to church? How can we follow Jesus in a moment by moment kind of way? How can we look for Jesus in the everyday and not just in the special days? And how can we allow the church to partner with us in the life of following Jesus? How can we relate to each other as mutual resources instead of as a product to consume? When we embrace following Jesus as a lifestyle, not just as a smattering of random events, we can really start to experience life with Jesus and live at our absolute best.